Hey guys, we've been out all day testing the Can-Am Outlander 1000 in XTP trim. The heart of this beast is the 976cc Rotax twin and it is absolutely the biggest draw of this machine. If you asked all of our riders which big bore 4x4 ATV they would actually want to own, the 2024 Can-Am Outlander 1000R XTP would be the majority pick. The reasons are simple. It offers more mud protection than a Renegade, full utility capability for work or adventure, and has unquestionably more performance than any other 1000cc sport utility ATV in its class, as proven in our inaugural 1000cc 4x4 sport utility ATV shootout. For its most significant round of updates, back in 2019, the Outlander 1000R received an increase in power from 89 to 91 horsepower, plus the addition of intelligent throttle control. The rear differential was made 50% stronger. The track width was increased 2 inches to make the Outlander 48 inches wide, and longer control arms increased suspension travel at both ends. Both ends received updated shock settings, and a front sway bar was added accompanied by a softer rear sway bar for improved articulation. You can always dive deeper into the 2019 updates by checking out our 2019 test and review. In 2020, the Outlander got a new 7.6 inch full digital display, along with redesigned inner fenders for improved airflow to help dissipate heat. Can-Am's manually lockable Visco 4 lock was expanded to the XTP models in 2022, accompanied by a recalibrated power steering in all modes for reduced kickback at high speeds. The 2023 model year added Can-Am's intelligent engine braking, new front-end styling along with dual LED front headlights, and now unchanged for 2024, other than the color change to Hyper Silver and Neo Yellow, we felt it was time to reevaluate one of our favorite ATVs on the market to see how the machine has changed with its numerous updates. ATV On Demand's test of the 2024 Can-Am Outlander 1000R XTP was made possible by we use Maxima SC1 on our fleet of ATVs to help prevent mud buildup, speed cleanup, reduce the look of minor scratches, restore deep factory color and shine, and of course, there's the legendary SC1 scent. More than a new bike in a can, this magic spray works great on mountain bikes, automobiles, boots, or just about any other plastic, vinyl, rubber, or carbon fiber surface. Get Maxima SC1 at your local power sports dealer or at MaximaUSA.com. Make staying in contact simple with the wireless PackTalk Edge ORV communication system from Cardo. Dynamic mesh communication provides up to a one mile range between units and up to five miles in larger groups. Water, dust, and mud proof. It offers easy and helmet installation with sound by JBL. Offering hands-free voice activated operation with up to 13 hours of talk time on a single charge. PackTalk is ideal for both in-car and car-to-car -car communication, allowing you to connect up to 15 units at one time. Ideal for side-by-sides, ATVs, dirt bikes, or any other type of off-road use. You guys ready? We're ready. Roll it. Learn more or order yours now at cardosystems.com. The 1000R is powered by a water-cooled, fuel-injected 976cc V-twin. It's a four-stroke engine with four valves and a single overhead cam per cylinder. You can run 87 octane gas, but there's 91 horsepower on tap with the use of premium pump gas, so it's best not to be stingy at the pump. Starting the engine requires the use of Can-Am's digitally encoded security system keys. The key comes programmed to work with all the throttle modes, or the digital key can be programmed by the dealer to limit the machine to work or normal throttle modes if desired. This is your starter button. You push it to start the machine up. Below this is the kill switch for the engine. Make sure that's on. Starter button will start the machine. The exhaust is a quiet rumbling at low RPMs that's not offensive for a long day's work. Open it up and the exhaust isn't obnoxiously loud, but it still offers a satisfyingly sporty sounding grunt. A drive-by-wire throttle incorporates Can-Am's intelligent throttle control. Another thing that has changed since we last tested this machine is the names of the throttle settings. You still have the three settings, but now there's work mode on or work mode off, which is normal. There's sport mode on, which obviously is the highest performance mode, and then sport mode off, which again is normal. The sportiest mode is the most fun. That's what allows this machine to feel like a 1000cc ATV. It is 
a little bit choppy on the throttle sometimes, especially when you're in technical terrain. So if you want to rein it in, normal mode is really good for riding with folks who may not have a machine that's equivalent to this, or just taking it down a notch and having it feel more like a wired throttle. And then work mode, of course, is good for not tearing up the grass in your yard, for towing around. And I used work mode today when we were doing some of our creek rides, and I wasn't sure what the actual terrain was going to look like. It, it doesn't allow you to get into trouble, and it's very, very manageable. And moving down here, you have your gear selector in the gated shifter. Reverse, neutral, high, and low gears. Ample horsepower and torque are available at all RPMs. Clutch engagement is very snappy and responsive, both off the line and accelerating at speed. Even with the throttle setting in work mode, the clutch still provides some snap off the line. That's helpful for work and play, but potentially a bit intimidating for riders who probably shouldn't be riding this much machine anyway. As soon as you crack the throttle, the Outlander just screams from the low end. It, it rolls on its power very, very quickly, and it's exactly what you would want from the most powerful ATV on the market. When you get through the low range and the trail opens up, the power delivery in the, in the mid range is very linear. It just keeps pulling with all the intensity that you would want, and that pull remains linear, and it just continues to pull all the way through the top end. This is the 1000cc ATV that actually feels like a 1000cc ATV. And part of that is from the clutching. The clutching hits hard right off the bottom. When you're rolling into corners and tearing out of it, you're always right where you want to be in the power. And I'm telling you, the clutching made it with that 976cc Rotax is really, really fun. And it's exactly what a 1000cc ATV should be. One of the updates we mentioned over the 19 version that we tested previous to this is the intelligent engine braking. And the intelligent engine braking really makes a difference. It does complicate the switch selection on the handlebars a little bit, but when you find your intelligent engine braking mode that you want, it's kind of a set it and forget it thing. What's really nice is the low range of the engine braking, where we like it because the engine braking feels a lot more natural than it did on previous versions of this machine. You can roll with speed, which really helps when you're going through choppy terrain. If there's too much engine braking, it kind of loads the front end a little bit and the choppier terrain becomes harder to deal with. When the engine braking is limited, you can kind of coast over those things, modulating the brake controls from the rider to the actual brakes themselves. And it's just a much more, um, it's an easier way to ride and it allows you to ride a lot more aggressively. Now we really like the lowest setting of the engine braking, but with it selectable, that's a really nice option because when you find steep descents or you're working around the yard and you want more engine braking, just click the button and it's right there. The engine braking on steep descents works very, very well and it's definitely a usable feature to have right at your fingertips. Overall, the engine's performance and versatility have been enhanced with the addition of the intelligent engine braking. Perhaps for 2025, Can-Am will further improve the CVT feel and performance by adding their P-Drive roller bearing equipped clutch. Can-Am has really covered all the bases with the addition of the Visco 4 lock. Two-wheel drive lets you get sideways easily. Four-wheel lock provides all the added grip we would typically need with its limited slip performance. It helps pull the machine through turns, enhancing steering accuracy while keeping steering light. When the traction becomes limited, it locks in power to all four wheels, providing maximum grip. Now, with Visco 4 lock offering front differential lock, Can-Am may have the best performing drivetrain on the market in a 4x4 ATV. The Outlander's steel frame has received a number of changes over the years to improve its durability and handling characteristics. Widened out in 2019 with arced A-arms front and Can-Am's torsional trailing arms out back, the Outlander's 48 inches wide. This was accomplished without raising the machine's center of gravity, retaining an overall height of 49.5 inches and 11 inches of ground clearance. Fox Podium 1.5 QS3 shocks are used at both ends. Nitrogen reservoirs help keep the shocks running cool and consistent. Threaded preload allows for precise spring preload adjustments, while three-position compression damping adjustment make firming or softening the ride quick and easy. Compared to the XT model's more simplistic notch preload adjustable shocks, 
The XTP and the even more adjustable XXC model's Fox shocks feature slightly firmer base settings due to their more sport-focused intentions. The shocks control 9.2 inches of front travel and 9.9 inches out back. Sway bars at both ends help keep body roll in check. The Fox QS3 suspension is perfect for trail riders. The three selectable compression settings, we actually use them quite a bit today. Um, it's very easy to swap the settings of compression and just one click up from where we were allowed us to take some of the bigger jumps that we were hitting today and go from bottoming out the suspension to not bottoming out the suspension. So there's a big difference just by the click of the comp uh, compression switch and I really think it's the most easy and manageable suspension to deal with that's still premium for trail riding. The QS3 suspension is also more plush than the suspension you'll find on the XXC models, which is also what makes it a little bit better for trail riding. That being said, at low speeds, the suspension isn't as plush as the Sportsman, but as you pick up the pace, that's when the suspension on this machine really starts to shine. It's much more compliant over chops. It just handles impacts so much better than some of the competition out there. Adjustments come in three on the Outlander XTP. Can-Am's tri-mode dynamic power steering lets you choose between three levels of power steering assistance. We were really able to feel out the steering on the Outlander today, especially this morning with the ground a little softer and tacky with some very tight, almost GNCC style trails. We were really able to get into the machine and really see what the, what the steering and some of the handling was about. I think power steering has been improved on the Outlanders. I don't know that for a fact, but this feels to me like power steering is improved over some of the older versions that we've tested in the past. It's a little bit easier, which I like. We always kind of felt like the highest setting of DPS in the past should have been the moderate setting and there should have been one up. Well, that's what it feels like now. It feels like power steering is right where I want it and even clicking it in four wheel drive help it track helped it track a little bit better, especially in some of those tight sections, but I'm really impressed with the power steering on the Outlander. I think Can-Am has really figured this out. The difference in power steering was noticeably improved in all modes, making steering effort lighter at all speeds with less bump feedback. We did reach out to Can-Am just to make sure we weren't imagining things, and they confirmed the recalibration. Handling and stability on this machine is probably best in its class, but we did find ourselves today getting it up on two wheels a little bit. Um, I think part of that is this machine has more motor than chassis. The class of 1,000cc ATVs have a little bit more motor than chassis. So you can get a little bit out of sorts, especially if you're heavy on the throttle. But as far as this goes, um, where it fits in the market, I would definitely say the handling is better than any other options available. High speed handling has always been one of the points that we have really liked about Can-Am's Outlander. The, as, you, as you start to go faster, some other machines in comparison will get a little bit twitchy. Now even though I mentioned it feels like the power steering effort is lighter on the Outlander, that didn't translate into a, twi into a twitchy or nervous feeling at higher speeds. It's still very compliant, it does exactly what you want to. And even though you can definitely go faster than you should go on an ATV, it feels like you're under control. We've mentioned many times before that the, IPT, the ITP Terracross tires are some of our favorite. They're probably one of the, the few uh, factory tires that I would definitely buy to replace when they were worn out for sure. Um, so I think that helps. But as far as the steering accuracy goes, it is easier to get yourself out of sorts when you have this much power on tap. But when you're at the appropriate range in the throttle, the machine is very accurate. It tracks very well, and that helps uh, finding the course in the tighter, twistier trails a little bit easier. Most Outlander 1000 models come outfitted with premium 6-ply 26-inch ITP Terracross tires designed for all conditions. They're 8 inches wide up front and 10 inches wide rear, and on the XXC and XTP models, they're mounted on 14-inch beadlock wheels, which let you ride harder and ensure you can make it back to camp, even on a flat. We like the tires so much in our 1000cc shootout that we use the Terracross tires on our recent Sportsman XP1000 project build, which benefited greatly from the traction upgrade, especially up front. In total, the machine adds up to a claimed wet weight of 954 pounds, which is a lot to stop. 
Upfront stopping power is provided by dual hydraulic disc brakes with 214 millimeter rotors and dual piston calipers. A similarly appointed single hydraulic disc brake is used out back. A left side handlebar mounted lever activates the brakes at both ends with a right side brake pedal operating the rear brake independently. Steel braided brake lines are standard equipment. So the braking power and feel is good. One thing you should be aware of on a machine with this power and this much mass is that braking is always going to take you a little bit longer than it would on a lesser comparable machine. Now, that being said, there is only one rear brake rotor. So what we have found as we start to put more miles on these machines is that we do tend to go through brake pads a little bit more often. So that's something you want to keep an eye on. With its full-size 2-inch hitch, the Outlander 1000R is rated to tow a class-leading 1,650 pounds. The composite racks are rated to haul up to 100 pounds front and 200 pounds rear. They feature Can-Am's Link-Q quick attachment points for Can-Am accessories. A rubberized surface is designed to help keep cargo from slipping around. We're fans of steel racks, but the rubberized racks on the Outlander actually do a good job of helping keep items in place. They offer a decent number of tie-down points that we felt pretty good about cinching down on. As composite racks go, the Outlanders are our favorite on the market. Out back, there's a 5.7 gallon dry storage box. We like that Can-Am storage box can be accessed even with the racks loaded down, but it closes loosely, rattles, and easily lets in mud and water. For almost $16,000, we feel like it should be watertight. So ergonomics wise, the Outlander is definitely comfortable enough for all day riding, which I do feel like is its intended purpose. The handlebars are a little bit lower than they would be on some other machines, which is actually pretty beneficial to when you want to ride it more aggressively. The midsection, as I mentioned, is thicker. That's just a result of the side mounted CVT to the Rotax engine that we talked about. The plastic footwells are good for plastic footwells. There's enough grip to grab onto your boot. The XXC model add the additional raised aluminum foot pegs, which we feel like should be added to every Outlander model, and that would probably be the first thing I would add to an XTP. With its winch controls, variable throttle, power steering, engine braking modes, 4x4 selection, and menu buttons, the controls are starting to get a little busy. But the layout is logical, it's easy to get used to, and the learning curve is worth having this much adjustability. The alloy tapered handlebars are a good bend in height for spirited riding. The full wrap handguards look racy and function well, and the fully digital instrument display is mounted in front of instead of on top of the handlebars, unlike most other 4x4 ATVs. And this makes it easy to outfit the Outlander with any type of aftermarket handlebar style or bend you prefer. The Outlander 1000R is available in several packages. And while we can understand Can-Am not offering the 1000 in the base trim packages without power steering, it was kind of a blow to the budget conscious consumer when Can-Am dropped the 1000R in the base power steering equipped DPS version. In the 850 class, the Outlander DPS is $1100 less expensive than the XT version, and the XT version is now the least expensive model for the 1000R at $14,249 in the US. But that is $1,250 less than the similarly appointed Sportsman XP1000 Ultimate Trail. The Outlander 1000R XTP we're testing is what we would consider the best combination of performance and utility in a 4x4 ATV out of Can-Am's lineup and on the market. Retailing at $15,949, which is up $1,449 since our 2019 test, we can say that unlike other manufacturers, there have been meaningful improvements that help justify the increase in costs. Can-Am also offers an even more sport or competition-focused Outlander XXC model at $16,349, featuring more fine-tunable Fox RC2 shocks, aluminum skid plates, and aluminum foot pegs. It trades in some of its utility for protection, featuring an aluminum front bumper that wraps over the front of the machine and meets up with the front chassis skid plate. The Outlander XMR1000R is the purpose-built mud machine for $15,949. And finally, for those who'd rather ride double on an ATV than spend life in a cage, Can-Am also offers the 1000R in a few of their 2UPS Max models, starting with the Outlander Max 1000R XT at $15,449. The XTP's $15,949 price tag is undoubtedly steep, 
but also consider that we outfitted a Sportsman XP-1000 with nearly $10,500 in accessories in an effort to build a better machine. The XTP's suspension alone more than justifies its price over the XT model and leaves the competition well behind. So at the end of the day, you know we love the Outlander. It won our competition against the Sportsman 1000 a few years back, and since that time, Can-Am has made meaningful improvements that contribute to the rideability of the Outlander. I think it's an improved machine that still keeps it on top of its class.